Hey guys, Scott Page here, and I'm back to do a new set of videos on OpenTX and FreeSky Tyrannus, and I'm gonna be using the Tyrannus Q X7 today, and my goal today is to simply do an update on the firmware and also the bootloader and show you how easy it is now. So I'm gonna start off with downloading what I need, and I'm over here on OpenTX.org, and I'm going to look here in the news and that's this will show me all of the most recent versions and the very top version here is 2.2 release candidate 10 um, it's still in beta but it's very solid uh, software they're just cleaning it up a little bit at this point click on that link and when you do go here please read it one of the things you'll see here is the SD card contents if your SD card does not match your, your firmware version you'll get an error I'm going to go ahead and download OpenTX Companion here. And I need to ins download o uh, OpenTX Companion and install it in order to get the firmware for the transmitter. You don't download the firmware directly. Okay, once it's downloaded, I then install it. And it doesn't take very much time to do the install, fairly quick. And now I can go ahead and run it right away. Okay, first of all, I want to set up my profile. Now, if you only have one transmitter, you're just going to have one profile. I've got a couple transmitters, and today I'm going to be using the QX7. So I'm going to choose that profile, and I want to really quickly make sure that I haven't made some changes in here. I'm going to have just mass storage and no Haley checked, and I want to really be sure I've got the right radio type. That's really foul some people up. So I've got the right radio type. I'm okay there. I'm ready to download the firmware. I just click here to download the firmware and then click on download FW, download firmware. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to name it a shorter name. And the reason I'm gonna do this, I'm going to be putting it into the SD card in the folders called firmware. It needs to have a shorter name so that it'll be seen in that um, operating system. Go ahead and save. And I don't have the transmitter connected right now, so I'm going to say no. I can go ahead and move this firmware to the SD card, either with a card reader, or if I have the transmitter on and I already have mass storage in that firmware, I can just simply plug it into a USB. If I don't have mass storage, I can put it into bootloader mode and then plug it into the USB. And I should be able to see the card and I can put it in that way and use the transmitter as a card reader. Any of those methods work. Okay, so that's good for now. Now let's go to the transmitter. Okay, here I am with the transmitter, and I'm gonna start off by putting this into bootloader mode and flashing the firmware so that uh, I have that part done. So to put it into bootloader mode, I'll push these two horizontal trims to the middle and turn it on. It comes right up and has flash firmware. I push the enter here on the rotary encoder and then it has two versions. It has 361, which I've got on it right now, and it also has 362, which I'm gonna flash. Notice right here, it has 361 um, as the current bootloader, and I'm gonna to wanna to update that as well. Now, it's actually not a big deal in this case for this increment, there's no big changes, but I wanna show how this is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and flash the firmware. I'll push on this, and it says hold, to start, hold the enter, which is pushing down on the rotary encoder. It writes the firmware. Writing is complete. So now all I need to do is move down to exit. And you notice here I still have the same bootloader. You can't flash both the bootloader and the firmware at the same time using this method. Um, there is a way to do it using the STM32 bootloader. I find that's kind of a hassle. Now it goes ahead and starts up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and check, check to see that I have the firmware on there. I will do a long press on the menu key in the middle, and then I can page across, and hopefully you can see here, I've got 2.202, um, and it's in 362, so I have the brand new version of the firmware on there. 
I'll go ahead and move back out. Now I'm going to go ahead and flash the bootloader. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and do a long press on the menu in the middle, and then I'll page over one page, and that takes me to the SD card contents. I'll move down to firmware and press on the rotary encoder, and I can see that I have three files in there. The one I'm interested in right now is the 362, the most recent firmware, and I'll go ahead and push on the enter key, and it gives me a choice of flashing the bootloader. The bootloader is done. I'll go ahead and exit out of there, and I'll turn off the transmitter. All right, now I'll go ahead and turn it back on and we'll see what bootloader we have. So I'm gonna start it in bootloader mode by pushing together the horizontal trims, powering it up, and notice here, I now have 2.2 and, well, you really can't see it, but it's 362. I have the most recent bootloader. All right, that's all there is to flashing the bootloader and flashing the firmware. Do each one separately, and you can do them with the transmitter on. You don't have to deal with the drivers in Windows. You don't have to mess around with um, the STM bootloader. That's always there if you get hung up and you need it, but this is a lot easier to deal with, I think. All right, until next time, this is Scott Page.